Thank you for tuning into the Gift of Podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Side topic podcast for today. What do the Rams need to do in order to repeat as Super Bowl champions? And first off, I think it's very possible that they could do that. Just like with the Bucks and the Chiefs this past year. They didn't make it, but there was a really good chance of them repeating because they had a really good team. I think the Rams have that core of players to where they could get back. So before I get into their team, I'm just going to look through the NFC and see if there's other teams that could possibly dethrone them as of right now. So with the Cardinals, they'll probably be in the playoffs, but there's a lot of bad blood right there. You got people unfollowing Arizona on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, it, obviously, Kyler Murray's not very happy. DeAndre Hopkins not very happy. So I think a lot of that has to do with the front office, and I think a little bit has to do with the coaching staff as well. They're not on board with the direction of this team. And I agree, because I do think that the Cardinals have had a lot of issues, especially when it comes to free agency. Really, I mean, they made some good moves, but then they make other moves that just don't really make a lot of sense, like expecting J.J. Watt uh, to to be this big-time playmaker for them, and then he doesn't. you know, And then letting things go, like a third option at receiver, uh, players in the secondary. There's a lot of neglection there with the Cardinals, and I think that's what the players are getting fed up with. But I do think they'll be in the playoff mix, but I, I really don't think they're going to dethrone the Rams. The 49ers, yeah, they're going to be in the mix. They're going to be right in the mix, and they could dethrone the Rams. It's possible. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be anything leaps and bounds where the Rams can't handle it because you're going to have Trey Lance at quarterback. There's a lot that he's still going to have to learn. And then, obviously, defensively, the 49ers got a few things they have to get right. But, yeah, let's not make any mistake about, about it. Shanahan's going to have them right back uh, in the mix for a Super Bowl run. Going to the NFC South, the Saints, there's a lot of things that they got to get right. I always respected the Saints because of their winning culture, the way they build a team. But I just really don't think that in one year they're going to turn that around completely. There's too much that they have to figure out, including the quarterback position. I mean, if Winston suits up a quarterback, that's fine. But I really don't think that's going to be a long-term answer to that to that um, problem. And then with the Bucks, they're falling apart before our very eyes. It's very possible that the Bucks could go from a legit playoff team like we've been seeing with Tom Brady to maybe only like a five or six win team next year. It's very possible that that could happen because they have a lot of free agents that are going to walk and a lot of their top tier players, you know, like Mike Evans, they're injury prone. And on the defensive side, you look at like the players that they've had like JPP, you know, Shaq Barrett, even like Levante David, these guys have had a lot of nagging injuries. So with all the players that are going to leave in free agency and the injuries, I think the Bucks are going to have a little bit of a falling out. And while we're on the subject, and I know I talked about it when I said goodbye to Tom Brady in that other podcast video, uh, but I think he left the Bucks knowing that it's over. You know, the, a lot of these players are getting hurt. Even Tristan Wirfs, their top draft pick on the O-line, you know, who knows if he's going to have an injury riddled career or not. And I think Brady saw this, you know, he just, he doesn't want to go through another season and have these guys keep getting hurt and not having a chance to go get the gold again. So he retired and it wouldn't surprise me if he came back even this next year and played for the 49ers. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But a lot of people were saying maybe in a year or two, he'll come back. He just needs to refresh himself, his mind and everything. Maybe that'll happen. Um, but don't be surprised if it does. Looking at the NFC North, obviously the Packers are going to be the one to beat there. But it just keeps getting back to Rodgers, the bad blood that they have with the front office, and the Packers just really not going for the money shot, you know? Defensively, the Packers have finally figured that problem out. So I'm, I'm happy with the way their defense is because that's been a huge problem for them in recent years. But the offensive line for the Packers is an issue. They're going to have to figure that out. And then just give Rodgers some weapons. Just load up. And you, I say, I've been, I feel like a broken record every single year I've been saying this. Devontae Adams is great. And having little role players like Lazard and St. Brown, that's great too. But you got to get another legit guy in there. You got to get, you know, like a, a Cooper Cup or an Odell Beckham up there with the Packers. You got to do it. And for whatever reason, they have one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game, and they refuse to put 
weapons around him. You tell me why. I, I have no clue, but that's what's going on there. And then with the NFC East, look, I do respect Dallas and the way they build a team every year. Like this last year, they loaded up a lot. So if Dallas has another offseason like they did this past year, I think they're going to be in the mix again. You know, McCarthy and Dak Prescott might hold them back, but let's not make any mistake about it. Dallas has a lot of talent on that football team, and they're dangerous on both sides of the ball. They can get to the quarterback. They can score a lot of points with their receivers. So those are the teams in the NFC that I think are going to be a problem for the Rams, but I don't think they're going to have a hard, hard time getting back. Um, they'll be in the playoffs, and they're going to be a dangerous team. So with that, let's get to this roster. So just looking at the free agents, the two big things that they're going to have to do, and I don't think it's going to be that hard for them to do it, is keep Odell Beckham and Von Miller under contract. And I don't think it's going to be that hard to do because we just saw Odell Beckham have that ACL tear. So I don't think anybody's going to really want to jump and give him a long-term contract with a lot of dollars. And on top of that, even if somebody did, I think maybe Odell Beckham probably would want to chase another ring anyway. So stay on a one-year contract worth $10 million or whatever and try to chase another ring. I think Odell, there's a good chance that we'll see him do that. The Rams obviously got to make it. Uh, make that so that happens. And then Bob Miller. You know, Bob Miller going to a team that's rebuilding, whatever, that's not a winning recipe because he can't do it all on his own anymore. But plug him next to a Sean Robinson, Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, and you give him those one-on-one -on -one matchups and he can come off the bench rested, he's going to be making a lot of plays. And I still think he's got a year or two left of that kind of play left in him. And why not chase another ring? You know, he's already got two. I would think that he would want to stay on a one-year deal worth seven or eight million. Why not? So I don't think those two things are going to be that hard to do. The other two things that they have to do um, before we talk about what they need to do in the draft and free agency is they got to make sure that Sean McVay and Aaron Donald don't retire. And I, I'm just shocked that that would even enter their mind. I know that they want to leave the game healthy and on top. I get that, but they're both still young. And you've got a really good core of players here. Why would you want to break that up? I could understand if they had no chance at a Super Bowl. Then, okay, fine, go out on top. There's no sense in going out there and smashing your head and you know trying to get hurt for no reason or the stress that comes along with being an NFL head coach with Sean McVay. I get that part of it. But there is a real chance that they could repeat here. So if I'm the owner, if I'm the front office, I'm doing everything that I can possibly do to keep McVay and Aaron Donald from thinking about retiring. I, I, I got to talk to them, got to make it worth their while to stay, whatever that may be. You know, maybe give Roger Kraft a call, uh, Robert Kraft a call, and, and give him the keys to the underground sex railroad. Uh, but uh, anything, just to get him to stay. So the other thing, uh, when you're looking at the offense that they've got to do, and I think it was very evident in the playoffs, they have got to get better on the offensive line. This is not a Rams offensive line that we're accustomed to seeing from you know, three, four years ago where they were opening up run lanes like crazy on that left side. Now, granted, that's when Andrew Whitworth was a few years younger, and they also had Roger Saffold on that left side too. They need to get some guards in there that can move some people, move bodies. That's what they need. So uh, if they do that uh, and – Obviously, it looks like Whitworth most likely is going to retire. Uh, they're going to have to go after a left tackle, too. So, for me, free agency in the draft is going to have to consist of three to four new faces on that offensive line. They have got to make that a priority. Um, other than that, on the offensive side, I think they're golden. I don't really see much else that they have to do. So, retain Odell, fix that offensive line. And you're good because you're going to have Cam Akers coming back fully healthy with a, you know an offseason under his belt and, and ready to go. So you're going to have that run game back. You're going to have Matt Stafford. You're still going to have Cooper Cup and Van Jefferson, who's a decent number three. But I got to say, you know his, his issues were exposed in the Super Bowl. You can't count on Van Jefferson even as a high-end number two. You can't do that. He's going to get taken out of the equation. So they really need Odell to come back to free up that space and I said it in the comment section, it, if Odell didn't get hurt in the Super Bowl, I really think they would have won by two possessions because it was just too overwhelming. 
for the Bengals secondary to deal with. And that's the kind of impact that Odell has, especially with McVay putting him in these excellent positions to succeed. Um, so they need him back for this offense to stay whole and to repeat as the Super Bowl champions. Defensively, already talked about Von Miller keeping Aaron Donald in check. I would say if they keep everything intact on the defensive line, maybe go after a couple rotational pieces on the D-line, beef up that linebacking core. I, I would. I love Ernest Jones. That was a solid draft pick in the third round, an absolute steal. But I would like for them just to get one more coverage linebacker in the building, um, a, vers- a versatile linebacker. And I think that would really solidify that core because – like Leonard Floyd, he's more of a pass rusher, defensive lineman, not really a drop back linebacker. So one more in that position. And then the secondary. You know, if, if they if there is a position they need to splurge on the most in the draft and free agency outside of the offensive line, I would say it's their secondary. Because it it definitely showed that they need another guy or two back there to go to pair with Jalen Ramsey. Not taking anything away from Taylor Rapp or, you know, Eric Weddle coming in and playing good off the street. You got to give him credit for that. But they need to get another legit outside shutdown corner to go with Jalen Ramsey. And I, I think that would be worth spending a high first or second round draft pick on or shelling out the money in free agency and making that your one big signing. Uh, however they want to do it. You know, it. Whether it's free agency first, you want to address uh, the secondary there, do it. But you're going to have to even that out because you're going to have to, like again, you need two, three pieces in the secondary you need three, four pieces on the offensive line for this to be a success. So with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Congrats to the Rams for winning this Super Bowl. They earned it. They played tough. And one little thing I did want to mention, though, too, about the Super Bowl, just you know, a little fact, and it was kind of surprising for me because I didn't think about it till after the game was played, but... It was surprising to me that both of the teams in the Super Bowl this year didn't particularly have that great of an offensive line. Both of the both the Bengals and the Rams have really good defensive lines, so that fit the bill. Because usually you see teams that win the Super Bowl have both, you know, a really good O line, a really good D line. And yeah, D line for sure. I mean, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Robinson, Leonard Floyd, uh, that's you know the best defensive line in the league. And then the Bengals with players like Sam Hubbard, Trey Hendrickson. You know, and you got those big body cloggers in the interior of that defensive line. You know, those guys, especially Hubbard and, and Hendrickson, those guys were playing elite. You know, they were rushing the passer. They were reading run plays like it was they were out of their mind. They were so focused. So that part of it made sense to me. But it was just very surprising that both of these teams made it to the Super Bowl with the issues that they had on the offensive line. Because uh, you look at, I mean, the Rams with their O-line, they weren't opening up anything for Cam Akers. You know, we can sit here and say Akers wasn't himself, this and that, but I don't think I saw one play where their guards opened up a run lane. And then with the Bengals, I, the stats speak for itself there. Joe Burrow, the most sacked quarterback in the NFL, and they still made it to the Super Bowl. To me, that is amazing. Again, so guys, with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I'll be seeing you guys soon with some more side podcast. Any ideas you guys got? Leave them in the comment section. If it's under my power, if it is within my power, I will do the podcast idea that you give me.